Hello, hello, good evening everyone, good evening and welcome. Um, sorry guys, I was a little bit late. Uh, it was due to my computer having some issues right now. But uh, still, here we are, ready to continue and ready to um, uh, start the wrap up for this week. So then tonight we are going to be um, covering the last topic uh, that was actually assigned to this um, to this course. Therefore, we are going to be talking about uh, future with going to, which is probably one of the most um, tricky topics that we have in English. Therefore, uh, it might take some of the time, some of our time for, for tonight's class. Um, so yeah, that's going to be part of what we're going to be doing. We're going to be working on that. And also, I would like us to take some time to talk about something that I consider to be um, crucial, very important, actually, when you get to know um, people. And uh, in this case, specifically, we're going to be talking about dreams and uh, more specifically about dream jobs. Um, I know that, you know, sometimes we have expectations and uh, we feel like uh, the job we have is OK. And um, yeah, maybe it is. But sometimes we also have the idea that um, we could get to change a few things, you know, in um, in the things that we do. Therefore, I think that it would be a great idea, you know, to go ahead and talk about that, about like, what will be your dream job, your dream position, or um, where would you like to have, you know, your, your dream job? Therefore, that will be the question for this evening. Um, hopefully, you guys are doing great. And uh, actually, that's also something that I haven't really done much in this course which is basically asking you about how you guys are doing. Um, maybe tomorrow we can talk about some of the different ways that exist on asking and also answering to those questions, to the typical how are you and also the many variations that it has. Um, apart from that, also something that I wanted to remind you guys about is the fact that uh, we also have... Um, we also have this thing that we are going to be doing on the last day of our class, which is for um, our Thursday, which is the reading contest. I remember I told you about it and I hope you guys have been practicing. Maybe tomorrow we can have a little bit of time to go ahead and, and have a reading practice or maybe even tonight. Let me see if we can uh, actually do it tonight because once again, it will be great to be ready um, for that for that uh, contest or it's not like a competition, it's more like an activity. So yeah, let's see if uh, we can go ahead and do that also to have a little bit of a reading practice because for Thursday, we're going to have to develop that activity and it will be great if we all are just ready, you know, to go and um, to see who is going to be the winner, to see who is going to take the cake, as they say in English. But okay, right now, the thing that we're going to be discussing is what is your dream job? What is your dream position? Or what or where will be um, your dream job? Let's see if we can get to hear first from uh, maybe Romeo. Uh, for you, Romeo, what will be your dream job? Hi, teacher. Hello there. Uh, I'm sorry, but my camera doesn't work. It's all um, right. Okay, um, my my dream job is um, like me seeing, uh, <laughs> really, I don't know. Um, maybe play, I can play violin. I mm -hmm. play in an orchestra. Uh, maybe I can uh, play my violin in, in a San Francisco orchestra. Oh, maybe uh, okay. yeah that sounds very fancy very good so playing yes, your violin I, yes i love the music the, the classical music uh, i play violin from my 10 years old mm -hmm. um, uh, naturally uh, my job is to my middle middle how do you say medio medio tiempo medio half, trabajo half time my half time job or uh -huh. work job my job. half yeah my half time job it's uh 
Tech Violin with the Ministry of Culture. And um, my this is my 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 which, passion. Yeah. All right, that sounds great. It sounds great for me because I have always wanted to learn to play the violin. Was it hard for you to learn? What? Was it hard for you to learn how to play the violin? Uh, but it depends. If you want to play, if you want to learn, uh, really, if you want to learn, play, mm -hmm. and it's very easy to play, but the band, because uh, every everyone is different for learning. Uh, uh, how do you say that? Uh, Arts, now, maybe, in this case? Uh, no, I, I, I want to say an uh, ability. Uh, oh, a skill, a skill. Yeah, a skill, yes, yes. Uh, but depends. Um, yeah. But really, it's... Um, very only the first and the second year uh -huh. is a little hard, but after the second year is more is easy. easier. It's easier, easier, yeah. How many years did you spend to learn uh, to play the uh, Maybe for if, if you want to know the the basic. Uh, maybe three or four years oh okay yes that was it but okay. if you want to play very professionally uh, professionally uh i have uh 20 25 years 25 years old mm -hmm. playing violin and i no he terminado de aprender how do you say i haven't finished learning i haven't finished learning yes Wow. Really, because the music uh, is more difficult every every do you, time. Do you play Vivaldi? Yes. Oh, okay. He's one of my yes. favorites. When, in terms of like, you know, the classics. Yes, the um, four seasons are. Mm -hmm. The are four beautiful. seasons are great. I love winter. I've been yeah. listening to winter so much lately. Hopefully it's going to be on my Spotify top 10 for, at the end of the year. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> one of the things that I mean that I love is to listen to violin covers of different songs and yeah. also um, cello covers. I don't know if you guys also uh, uh, yeah. teach cello. Yes. Um, no, in, in my case, I only teach, teach uh, violin and viola and a little piano. Oh, great. Yes. But the cello and contrabajo, no. Oh. I don't like. Okay. <laughs> I, um, I like the, the, the sound, but I don't like to play. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But cool. Yeah. Your dream, job, your dream job sounds very, very good. You know, teaching or, I mean, learn playing, playing your violin in the San Francisco Orchestra. That sounds great. That sounds like a, like a very thought of dream. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Thank <laughs> okay. you for sharing. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on then. Uh, what if we get to hear now from, um, let's see, Jorge. How about you, Jorge? What would be your opinion on the topic? Good evening. Good evening, Jorge. Uh, my dream job, I would like to create my own business. Um, relate to the computer um, export of the accessory for example in printer screen mouse and and different accessory for me is my perfect job and my perfect uh, business all right very good. Sounds great. Sounds like a, like a good idea as well. You know, having your own business and also doing something that you love. Um, I have also thought about that, you know, about having a store. In my case, where I live, um, and I think I have shared this with you guys before. I, yeah, I, I have. I remember I have. I am learning about um, air conditioning systems. And there is not a single store here where I live or close by that sells air conditioning products. 
um, they sell or the, 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 the big equipment, but they don't sell, for example, all the gases or the um, different pieces that you need to install an air conditioning system. So I have had that idea. It's not like a dream job because uh, if I'm to be honest, my dream job will be something very different. But I, um, you know, have that idea of like um, doing the or selling the, the different parts or uh, pieces that you need in terms of uh, installing or working with air conditioning systems, which is something we don't really have around here. So good, very good. Thank you very much for sharing. All right, how about the case of, um, let's see, um, Laura, what do you think? What will be your dream job? Hey, good evening, everyone. In my case, I, my dream job will be travel around the world and I get up to pay for that. For example, I would like to travel in a cruise. I would like uh, a job in that. And for example, in informatic area, area is correct that? Yes, area. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, and for example, in a network, or uh, equipment main, ay, mantenimiento? Maintenance, maintenance. Main, maintenance. Mm -hmm. Maintenance, yes. Maintenance. I would like to travel in, uh, in, 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 in the area specific for my uh, career. Mm -hmm. And I travel around the world for me, it's a, a dream job. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, depending on your like expectations or maybe the desire that you have, um, my best friend, I haven't really shared this with you before. My best friend, she's a, um, a flight attendant uh, with um, this company, Qatar Airways. Probably you guys have heard about it. So she worked with them. She has been working for the company for almost a year now. Yeah, we are this close. It's actually going to be a year in a few days. So she has been working with Qatar Airways for a whole year and she has been to so many beautiful cities that it's unbelievable i mean she has been to tokyo she has been to um australia uh many times she has been to cairo in, in egypt mm -hmm. um also istanbul in turkey um mm -hmm. many cities in france many cities in england because she goes to england almost all the time she has been to switzerland she has been to to many places many many places and uh she says that, I mean, in terms of the traveling or getting to see the world and experience all the different cultures and things, mm -hmm. she has enjoyed the job. But in terms of the treatment that people give her, like, you know, the passengers from, from the, um, the, air, the airplanes and all that, she hasn't really had the best time because sometimes people are very rude. She says that, for example, one of her least favorite routes is going to Cairo. And Cairo is very close from Qatar. Therefore, they have many flights going on from Cairo to Qatar. So she says that it's very difficult because people like Egyptians are very rough and they are not really nice people. But mm. yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's part of the job. It's part of what you have to do. But at the same time, she says that she has enjoyed her time. Like I tried myself um, last year. I tried to to get into the company when they were hiring a lot of people for the World Cup. But at the end, it wasn't possible. I mean, I didn't make it. But at the same time, it was a nice experience. And it's great to see, for example, that she has achieved um, some of her dreams. For example, during this last week, she has been staying in Hawaii with her boyfriend. So you see the experiences that this gives you, it's, it's just great. So if you ever have a chance, if anyone ever comes near you and tells you that you can have a chance to travel or to work on something like that, um, it's possible. I even met a guy one time that offered me a job at a cruise ship. Uh, it was in the Cameroon, and I, I mean, I was staying there with my girlfriend. And when he found out that I I was able to speak English, he told me that um, that they had positions open in a cruise ship where he worked. But the guy came through as a little bit of a weirdo. Therefore, I didn't take his word. Um, probably, if I had, I would be working on that. But I don't know why. I just didn't trust the guy. Therefore, I was like, ah. I'm sorry, dude, but I don't feel like doing that. I'd rather be a teacher right now. Uh, but yeah, you know, opportunities come and go. So if you take them, you can make it. All right. Uh, let's move on and let's hear maybe from 
Uh, Melissa, how about you, Melissa? What will be your dream job? Hi. Hello there. Um, my dream job is working in an international entertainment company mm -hmm. as an editor of movies, shows, or series. I'd like to work that. Okay. Great. Very good. Um, hopefully, you're good at editing. Hopefully, you know, that uh, you have uh, um, done something like that before. And uh, therefore, you will be great at it. In my dream job is actually related to movies and it comes very close to the idea that you have because you would like to be editing. In my case, I would like to be a interpreter, you know, like the ones who um, take the movies from one language to another. Um, I would like to be that. I would like to be a guy who is there, you know, working on giving its voice or his voice to different characters in movies. I have heard that... Um, you know, there are so many people that do that. Even here in El Salvador, we are starting to grow in that area. We are starting to become translators ourselves because some companies are trusting um, Salvadoran companies with the translation of their movies. And uh, hopefully one day we're going to grow on that industry and I can make it through. Um, I know it's not like a huge thing. It's not like, you know, having, I don't know, like being an astronaut or something like that. But at the same time, it's something that I feel like will be great. I mean, I would like to have an experience on that and working as a translator for, for movies or series, which is important for many people. And uh, honestly, I would love to give my voice to, um, to a few characters out there. But cool. Very good. Uh, moving on. How about the case of... Um, um, let me see. Mariela, what would you like to do in your dream job, Mariela? Body decoration and today for hello. Hello. No, I think hello. there we go. Mm -hmm. Si me escuchan. Yes, yes, confirm. Okay. Uh, I would like to have my own business about body decorations and details for special occasions like flowers and balloons. Great. That sounds very, very good. Um, personally, well, <laughs> my friends say that I'm like a Barbie because I have done so many <laughs> different things in my life. And uh, I have actually worked on that. My best friend or yeah, one of them, his mom actually has one of those um, companies. And uh, I have worked on that. I have done decorations. I'm not like a professional. I'm more like the assistant, but I have done that. And it's fun. It's very fun. Like when you see, you know, when you get to places and you see the people who are expecting what you're going to do and like um, they're all excited about it. And when you leave and you have done your job and you have done the things and you have now decorated or changed the, the space and have uh, left something nice for them, their faces and how uh, thankful they are it is amazing to feel that. And uh, also, I mean, putting some creativity or some art into it. Um, I feel like it's one of those jobs that is underrated sometimes, but it's great. You know, it's great to, um, to go ahead and do something like that because giving people um, a nice occasion or giving them a, a good time is something that uh, of course can make us feel um, a lot better and uh, yeah I think that uh, working on, uh, as that is great and it also gives good money so good idea very good idea all right uh, moving on how about the case of I don't know Wendy Paula are you feeling better now can you can you share can you speak Okay, probably not. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, do you, uh, do you hear me? Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Confirm, confirm. Okay. <laughs> well, um, my um, my great job is, is the same that the, the the last friend because yes, I want to 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 have my own business and um, like. Uh, 
and be my own boss. Yeah. Um, and the business uh, will be uh, the making pie or baking. Uh huh. Um, and that's. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, you have baked before and you do it nicely. So good, very good. <laughs> talking about that, talking about odd jobs, the other day, I was sharing with my girlfriend, I told her that um, as I have my inspiration or aspiration, um, better yet, mm. of uh, going to going to the US, you know, going to the United States or sorry, to Canada, my, my aspiration is actually going to Canada. I told her like, if she has ever thought about what is she going to do if we actually make that through, you know, if we um, go to, to, another, um, to another country, uh what would she do and uh she told me that she didn't have an idea and me myself i told her that one of the things that i would like to do honestly is to work as a as a waiter i don't know if you guys know what a waiter is hopefully you do as como un mesero see i would like to to work as that i don't know why but i just have the idea that working as waiters uh is something tiring but exciting and uh, I don't know, it's just, you know, one of those ideas that people have. And in my case, I would like to work at that. So it's similar, kind of related to the, to the pie thing. Um, but also, you know, making pies or cakes is something that um, can make you earn some good money and also um, turn into, into a small business. Actually, one of my sister's friends, he started with tartaletas. He was selling like a small pies. and then. Now he's one of the most recognized bakers in, in my area. Like he's one of the best actually in baking pies or um, cakes. So yeah, you know, it's something that is very interesting. And some companies or bigger companies maybe don't consider some ideas that people have. But if you do it and you do it well, maybe you can make it. So hopefully, hopefully you will make it. Okay. How about we hear now from uh, Osmin? What will be your dream job, Asmin? Uh, good evening, teacher. Um, I, my work is perfect for me. I, I don't have a, a dream job. I, I, I have a, a good job. I like, I like, I, ha, I, I am an instructor uh police uh-huh but i i would like uh to learn english very well um, uh, for for go to the mission international okay to instruct people overseas yes i I would like to travel in different countries uh, uh, here, here, eh, no sé cómo se, tenemos esa, esa posibilidad. No sé we, cómo, ha, we have that chance. We have a chance in this, in this work. Oh, I like my job. Very good. That sounds great. Yeah. And uh, being a police instructor sounds like a very fun thing to do. Um, something probably we don't think about very too often but yeah it sounds very nice sounds like a very good activity and if you have the chance to go to other places to instruct people from other countries you know why not why not trying it so very good hopefully you're gonna make it hopefully you will learn uh english and then you know you can have your chance to go to another country and instruct people in another country very nice very good sounds very very nice all right, moving on. How about we hear now from Ruth? What will be your dream job, Ruth? Please don't tell us you want to be a barista. Just kidding. <laughs> Hi, teacher. Hi, Hi guys. Good evening. Uh, when you talk about uh, dream jobs, you uh, is something probably never happened or something you probably do. Be Good. as creative as you want. Be as creative as you want. There is no limits. I have many dream jobs. <laughs> All right. Uh, I 
when I was a child, a little girl, uh, I want I want uh, to be a a policewoman. <laughs> mm, okay. And I I want to work a uh, FBI. Nice. And I would like to be a creator content. I would like to be a singer. I would like, I would like to be actress. <laughs> but my my uh the most important dream jobs and probably i i will be i will have my own business and i would like to have a uh, my own restaurant okay uh, uh, the typical foods and the names, the name, mm -hmm. going to be uh, El Apapacho. Oh, that sounds like a nice name. Because uh, that that word in Nahuatl, mm -hmm. uh, the meaning is how with your uh, with your soul. Oh, really. Okay. And when you cook with, uh, when you cook to your family or your wife or your husband, uh, you cook with love, you cook uh, with dedication and pra uh, when, primero Dios, <laughs> mm -hmm. when I, uh, Cuando, cuando yo tenga, when mm -hmm. I when I when, have. when I have my own business, my own restaurant, I'm I'm gonna cook in my restaurant because I love cook too, and it's a a, a job difficult uh, for many people because uh, it's stressful is uh, dangerous yeah. but when you cook uh to your family or when you your friends love. with you cook with love and i i have uh i have worked like a uh, uh, cocinera uh -huh. cook a cook a chef mm -hmm. and i like i like it but uh, it's, it's so uh, a stressful work to work. Uh, otras, es difícil trabajar para otras personas. Uh -huh. It's hard working for other people. Yeah. Okay. And so for that reason, I would like to have my own restaurant. Very good. Yeah, that sounds nice. Sounds like a uh, achievable dream as well, because it's not something impossible, you know. Um, having your own restaurant will be um, something achievable, depending on where you set it and also where uh, or what kind of thing you want to sell. Um, earlier today, as I'm trying to expand my knowledge and I'm trying to learn new, more things, I am getting into as many courses as I can. I saw something about a curse in Irka. I think there is not Irka in San Salvador. I think the closest is in Santa Ana, I think. But uh, I think many other institutes can have this course, you know. It was about regional cuisine. Um, when we talk about regional, we talk about Guatemala, Honduras, probably Nicaragua and Costa Rica, and of course, El Salvador. And I thought it was very interesting because I have been to Guatemala a few times, and I have noticed that the food is different. Like the taste that you get uh, from the food in Guatemala is different. Even the beans that we normally have, we normally eat red beans. They eat black beans. Um, it was a shock the first time. The first time I didn't, I didn't feel like I wanted to try them. Then it was like, okay, it's not the same, but it's, you know, a difference. I'm in a different place. So of course, some things are going to be different. Um, but I thought it was interesting because 
we don't really see those things often, like the opportunity to try real food from the other places. Because, for example, the Mexican food that we try, that we normally try, doesn't really have the same seasonings as in Mexico because maybe we cannot get them or maybe just because we are lazy and we don't want to to make that as you know as the, it actually is um and it also happened to me last week actually it was last friday i had the opportunity to try some things called uh, i forgot the name <laughs> but it was something like uh you know like one of those breads or sandwiches that people give you in a in a in a birthday or something birthday party the regular sandwiches but it was made with pan frances it had cabbage it had chicken it had a chorizo if you want it but the bread itself was dipped into a red thing i think in my opinion it was made out of um paprika i don't know they say it wasn't it was very, very similar to the paprika flavor, um, but it was different. It was very different. And because the woman is Mexican, she said that that is not something that Mexican restaurants are going to sell. It's not something very common that a Mexican restaurant will have something like that. And I just started thinking about that. You know, sometimes we have the chances of like trying things from other countries, but we feel like that's what we're trying. But actually, in reality, we're not necessarily trying, uh, you know, the, the the actual thing, like the flavor from from another country. So if you ever do that, Ruth, please try to be as conservative and also and also as true to self as possible. Because I mean, having the chance to try food that is made with love, as you said, is something special. And apart from being special, is something that your clients, your future clients, are going to appreciate. Therefore. You know, why not? If you want to do it as bad as you say that you want to do it, then go ahead for it. But uh, just be be honest with yourself and also with the people that you were going to sell the things and try to, to make them have the day of their life, the meal of their lives. Because, yeah, it's important, you know, to, to share. And if you want to do it, it would be amazing. All right. Uh, we're going to hear from the last person tonight. And the last is going to be Maria Dolores. So tell us, Maria, what would be your dream job? Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, okay. I believe my my dream job is a uh, is uh, in the actuality. The actuality. Mm -hmm. Always um, being achieved is um. So I am quite a little. I play a nurses, mm -hmm. and, and this. No sé cómo se dice que a pesar. ¿Cómo? Perdón. This, a pesar. Despite. Money, despite. Despite. Despite money, uh -huh. and financial, and other giants, and I. In the uh, in the actuality is uh, I yo realizo my jobs in in my dreams because I was I work as nurse in a critical area and I love my jobs and because I can help and improve the the health. Uh, in the status of a new new birth um, is interesting my job because I um, is me considero útil um, <laughs> um, uh -huh. oh but, but uh, uh, Sí, dígalo, dígalo, perdón. Eh, para decir eso, para decirme considero útil, lo más fácil sería I consider myself useful, sí. O sea, que sería el caso, ¿verdad? De que soy um, útil para, para los demás. Entonces, yeah, I consider myself useful or to be a, a, a useful um, part of society. 
Okay, yes. And I lo uno logra ayudar, no sé, un, I I care, I, I get to help. I ajá. Uh, 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 en ese momento difícil de la etapa. Uh -huh. Caso, ¿verdad? O sea, lo, ya no tengo más palabras más de, de en el caso, más que todo a los papás, a los niños directamente, a los bebés neonatos, pero a los the parents, eh, I, eh, I see eh, eh, em, como si quiere compártelo en español, no hay problema. Ok. Uno mira la necesidad que hay en cuanto a a, a obtener la salud cuando nace, ¿verdad? Y, y los papás, uno se empatiza con la situación de salud de los, de los bebés en áreas críticas. Ok, nice. Parte de eso, uh, I, I, I also like pastry and cosmetology. <risa> ok, great. Nada que ver, una agregando, cosa con Sí, agregando. Primero vendió todo el trabajo soñado, lo hago todo, me gusta mucho mi trabajo, y luego me gusta la pastelería y la cosmetología. Great, very good. No, but it's okay, you know, it's, it's, we're just sharing, we're trying to practice and share what we think. Um, but the other day I remember I told you and I thanked you because I always have thought that people who work in health and security, those are like the more main things or main areas that don't necessarily get to rest, um, are so crucial. And sometimes we devalue the work that you guys do. Because um, many people just see nurses as grumpy people. But I see like, I mean, I don't, I would not say that it's not true. Like there are some people who, you know, that don't, do their job with love or that they don't try to help uh, the others. But at the same time, we have to be thankful because we don't know how hard it has been for them and how difficult it is to be there every single day. And uh, yeah, I mean, some of the things that, that you do in terms of like the people who are working in the health industry, it's just so hard and uh, so appreciated or underappreciated. Um, so I consider that we should start being um, better and more thankful. And uh, hopefully, you know, we're going to grow into that. We're going to grow into, into being more thankful and, and being more aware of what you guys do. But um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Sometimes we just have to go through things and uh, experience them just to be able to understand how difficult they are. But As I said before, I would like to thank you once again for all the hard work and all the difficult things that you got, have to go through. Um, and yeah, I mean, thank you very much for that. And hopefully, you know, it's going to be something that the life itself will be able to pay you back because it's very difficult that money itself is going to do it. But yeah, I mean, you know, things are difficult sometimes but uh we are strong enough also to face those things well now we are going to move into this i told you guys that uh, um, we were going to talk about it about the um about the future and this time around it's going to be future with going to and will there are a few, a few differences when we talk about the future using either or from these structures now Here we have it. Um, so, okay, so here we have it. We use it, a ver, aquí hay una complicación, y de hecho, sí, se me, se me había pasado eso un poquito por alto. Hay una cosa un poco complicada con esto, ¿sí? ¿Por qué? El going to, si bien sabemos, ya lo hemos eh, utilizado anteriormente, se utiliza o se usa el going to para referirnos a situaciones acerca del futuro, pero no necesariamente eh, solo eh, así, ¿verdad? A lo libre, solo cuando utilizamos o yo digo nada más. Um, ah, no, perdón, 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 perdón. Ese es el going to, sorry. Sí, ese es el going to. El going to por el mismo, este sin necesidad de una expresión de tiempo, eh, es capaz de expresar futuro, ¿sí? Con lo que me estaba confundiendo es con el... Um, 
con el presente continuo que se utiliza para expresar futuro, como el caso que yo dijera, I'm relaxing at the beach, o sea, y ese se entendería como yo me estoy relajando en la playa, pero cuando yo agrego una frase que tenga que ver con el tiempo y que obviamente deberá estar en futuro, es allí cuando ya la frase toma, toma forma completa y se entiende como una frase de futuro. Si yo dijera, I'm relaxing at the beach um, next Friday, ¿sí? En ese caso sí, ¿verdad? O sea, me voy a relajar en la playa el próximo viernes. Entonces, eh, se entenderá ya como una frase de futuro. El going to por sí solo, sí, se refiere al futuro. O sea, y se refiere a, como dice acá bien, a planes, ¿sí? En los que ya nos hemos decidido. O sea, cosas que nosotros ya decidimos, cosas que para nosotros van a ser reales. Entonces, ese es el momento en el que utilizamos el going to. Y específicamente el going to, es, eh, espero que tengamos también eh, clara esa idea, ¿verdad? Que es el going to y no el presente continuo para hablar acerca del futuro. Ya en un momento les voy a dar más ejemplos de cómo se trataría, se trataría o se estructuraría una oración o una pregunta a la hora de utilizar el presente continuo para referirnos al futuro. Por otro lado, con will. Con will se utiliza para planes posibles, pero en ocasiones antes de haber hecho o haber tomado la decisión. Sí. Eh, principalmente esto viene siendo con planes como lo que hablábamos el último jueves que tuvimos clase que era la idea verdad de que teníamos para la vacación o sea son planes son ideas por ejemplo en el caso de Jorge si mal no recuerdo o sea Jorge tenía sus ideas de lo que quería hacer pero pues como se enfermó al final no pudo verdad realizar sus planes entonces eh, cuando hablamos de este tipo de planes lo mejor que podemos hacer cuando son cosas quizás también a la larga, es hablar con el Will. O sea, o decir, ¿verdad? Hablar con el Will y yo veo todo buscando a Will para platicar con él. No, me refiero a expresar las cosas utilizando la estructura del Will. Um, la pregunta es la misma, ¿verdad? What are you going to do? Y luego yo digo, ahora, este es el punto importante, ¿sí? Y esto es lo que, por lo que les decía de que es complicado porque aquí, o sea, en el texto mismo, solo viendo este chart, no se explica este punto. Y esto es lo más, más importante que debemos tomar en cuenta. Las palabras que se utilizan que van a impregnar la posibilidad o la duda, ¿ok? ¿Por qué? Porque cuando yo utilizo will, así por sí solo, will es la forma más certera que hay acerca del futuro. O sea, por ejemplo, si yo digo, eh, I will go to bed at 10. O sea, eso es algo que yo tengo planeado y es como que de lo que yo estoy seguro que eso así va a ser. O sea, que yo me voy a acostar a las 10. Entonces, si yo utilizo will, es porque yo estoy muy, 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 muy seguro de que eso va a pasar. Estoy básicamente un 90% seguro porque pues acerca del futuro no podemos necesariamente estar 100% seguros, pero estoy súper seguro de que eso va a ser así. Por ejemplo, utilizamos will cuando hablamos acerca de obligaciones, ¿verdad? Cuando yo digo... Um, I will be home by four tomorrow because my dad needs me here. Entonces yo digo, voy a estar en la casa a las cuatro mañana porque mi papá me necesita acá. Entonces, o sea, estoy haciendo una expresión con Will porque yo tengo que cumplir con esa, con esa orden, con esa regla. Entonces, así sí. ¿Cuándo se le baja esa medida de certeza a Will? Cuando utilizo palabras como guess, maybe, think, o probably. Sí. Si utilizo palabras como esas, entonces yo estoy diciendo, por ejemplo, en la primera, la primera respuesta, I'm not sure, I guess I'll just stay home. Sí. Creo, creo que me voy a quedar en la casa. Entonces, eh, estoy utilizando will, sí, pero con creo. Significa entonces que es como que creo que voy a hacer eso. O sea, es como el plan que tengo y estoy casi que seguro que lo voy a hacer, pero también tengo esa duda. Entonces, por eso utilizo el guess ahí en el medio, ¿verdad? Luego tenemos aquí, maybe I'll watch a few DVDs. Maybe I'll watch a few DVDs. Significa que quizá, sí, quizá voy a ver algunos DVDs. O sea, voy a ver algunas películas. Cuando decimos el DVD se refiere a las películas. So maybe I'll watch a few DVDs. Entonces significa que quizá voy a ver algunas, algunos DVDs, ¿sí? Eh, una vez más, a pesar que utilice will, aquí que digo I'll, digo maybe antes, sí, maybe, eso entonces in, in, eh, genera una duda, genera una incerteza en la frase. 
si yo estuviese seguro de lo que voy a hacer, si es como que yo soy el líder de esta, de esta situación y nadie me va a mover de esto, yo puedo decir, I'll watch a few DVDs. O sea, significa que yo voy a ver un par de DVDs. Nadie me va a quitar el DVD, nadie me va a quitar la tele. Entonces, esa es mi idea y es lo que voy a hacer. No utilizo maybe porque es mi plan y es mi certeza también, ¿verdad? De que eso va a suceder tal y como lo dije. Luego tenemos por otro lado, I don't know. Sí, también esto, ¿verdad? Incluir frases como esta hace todavía que la frase se convierta en algo más inseguro, más... Eh, difícil que se, que se haga realidad El caso que yo diga I'm not sure O I don't know Utilizando cualquiera de estas dos Estoy in, eh, introduciendo la idea De que aún no me he terminado de decidir So I'm not sure I don't know I'm not sure Bueno, perdón, en este caso es I don't know I think I'll go camping ¿Sí? I don't know I think I'll go camping Significa, no sé Pienso que iré a acampar entonces, una vez más, utilizando el pienso, o sea, yo no estoy seguro. Sí, yo no, no tengo la certeza que regularmente me da el utilizar la frase del will. Entonces, por eso les digo, es importante fijarnos en eso. Siempre que tenemos alguna de esas palabras como I guess, maybe, I think, o probably, o I probably, eh, ese will no es un will que se está utilizando para hablar acerca de una certeza, sino que es más un will muy dudoso, es un will en el cual eh, yo no estoy seguro, ¿verdad? De casi que nada de lo que va a pasar. Entonces, uh, I, I think I'll go camping. Por otro lado, tenemos, I probably won't go anywhere. Sí, I probably won't go anywhere. Significa que probablemente no iré a ningún lado. Sí, I probably won't go anywhere. Entonces, una vez más, tengo el probably, significa una eh, incerteza, una situación en la cual yo tengo dudas acerca de lo que va a pasar. So, I probably won't go anywhere. Bueno, en el caso de utilizar el going to, como ya les decía, el going to pueda que nos dé una certeza quizá de un 70%. O sea, yo estoy 70% seguro de que lo que estoy mencionando lo voy a hacer. Entonces, si yo digo, what are you going to do? Y luego menciono, I'm going to relax at the beach. Es como que estoy muy seguro de que eso va a pasar. O si no, we're going to go surfing every day. Significa también, ¿verdad? Que yo estoy bastante seguro de que ese es el plan y eso es lo que vamos a hacer. Vamos a ir a surfear todos los días. Then we have, I'm not going to do anything special. Es otra vez el plan que tengo o la idea que tengo es que no voy a hacer nada muy especial. Sí, I'm not going to do anything special. Esta clase, de hecho, hubiese quedado perfecta el jueves pasado, pero como les dije, les decidí retrasar un poco porque eh, los temas son muy cortos en este, en este curso, así que um, por eso, ¿verdad? Tampoco nos quedaba del todo bien. Digo porque cuando hablábamos acerca de los planes, eh, también esto hubiese estado eh, muy funcional para poder establecer nuestras oraciones. Pero, entonces, ¿alguna duda que tengamos con esto? Les pido de favor que sean sinceros en algún momento si tienen algún, alguna duda. Eh, ¿Entendemos cuándo vamos a utilizar cuál de las dos formas, las dos estructuras? Yes, teacher. Ok, muy bien. Entonces, ahora, solo para que lo tengamos aquí como una forma de cadena, quiero nada más eh, colocarles el, la forma en la cual vamos a ir llegando a hablar acerca del futuro. Sí. Um, Sería el primero... El present continuous. Esa sería como la forma, digamos... Oh, no. Perdón, perdón, perdón. Uh, primero sería el will. Sí. Will más... Um, doubt words. So, no, ¿de cómo era? Sí, doubts. Doubts. Entonces, ese sería el primero. Sí, esa es la forma digamos, más básica, hablar acerca del futuro, que sería lo que estamos viendo justo ahora. Luego tenemos el present continuous, esa sería otra. Luego tenemos el uso del going to, ¿sí? Going to, que sería la estructura que tenemos aquí. Y luego tendríamos el will con certeza. Ok, entonces, estas serían como los cuatro niveles que podemos usar para hablar acerca de um, lo que sería, ¿verdad? El will, um, 
son, es como bastante sencillo en realidad llevar el control de esto, o sea, ustedes solamente tienen que fijarse, ¿verdad? Que cuando utilizamos el will y alguna de esas palabras que infieran duda, entonces la certeza que tenemos no es tan grande. El present continuous, eh, si no recuerdan, es simplemente cuando, ya les dije, cuando utilizamos el verbo, puede ser, qué sé yo, playing, y luego utilizamos una uh, time expression. Sí, una time expression que lo que hace es simplemente ayudarnos a que este verbo tenga un significado en el futuro. Como si yo dijera, por ejemplo, um, I'm playing uh, soccer tomorrow. Sí, voy a jugar fútbol mañana. Entonces esto lo que me hace a mí entender es que esta actividad va a tomar lugar mañana. Pero para ello es necesario que exista esta frase del de futuro. Si esta frase no está presente, entonces la oración se va a entender como una oración de presente continuo. Solamente voy a decir, I'm playing soccer, y eso se va a entender como que estoy jugando fútbol. O sea, como si ahorita yo estoy realizando esa actividad. Luego tenemos el uso del going to. Cuando utilizamos el going to, ustedes lo pueden ver acá, de una vez se entiende que el going to es una frase de futuro. Ahora, el punto importante también es que en algún momento se tiene que introducir la actividad. O sea, tenemos que mencionar qué es lo que vamos a hacer. Por ejemplo, eh, si alguien dice que va de vacaciones, entonces ahí yo puedo iniciar con estas preguntas. ¿verdad? Alguien me dice, I'm going on vacation. Sí. I'm going on vacation. Oh, come on. Entonces, ahí yo inicio con esta pregunta. Well, what are you going to do, digamos. Entonces, y de ahí en adelante, vamos a seguir, ¿verdad? Con las respuestas y eh, si ustedes utilizan, como les digo, el going to, eh, todo lo que digan va a estar relacionado con este tema de acá, con lo de la vacación, con lo que se mencionó, con la actividad que se mencionó, que va a tomar lugar en el futuro. Si ustedes no han mencionado una actividad así, y simplemente de la nada dicen, um, qué sé yo, I'm going for a coffee. Sí, eso también se entiende eh, como una actividad de futuro porque en este momento ustedes están informando acerca de algo que van a hacer. Pero las demás frases, así cuando hablamos de eventos principalmente, es importante, ¿verdad? Que el evento quede claro antes de, de continuar con la conversación, por decirlo así. Es perdón, importantísimo que se mencione el evento y después de allí ya ustedes pueden empezar a mencionar, ¿verdad? Todas las actividades que van a querer realizar en ese evento o a raíz del evento. Bueno, por otro lado, tenemos la utilización del will, que es pues el will con certeza, el will que les mencionaba antes, cuando ustedes hablan acerca, qué sé yo, de obligaciones o situaciones así bien um, certeras, cosas de las que estén ustedes muy seguros. Entonces, eh, ese es el otro tipo, ¿verdad? De forma que vamos a utilizar y que pues es como el will final, por decir así, el que expresa completamente um, esa certeza en la situación y que nos ayuda a aclarar, ¿verdad? De que estamos un 90% seguros de lo que vamos a hacer. Ejemplo de esto podría ser si yo digo, I will sleep tonight. Sí, I will sleep tonight. O sea, estoy bastante seguro de esto. Ahora, claro. Como les digo, no hay nunca una certeza del 100% porque pues varias cosas pueden pasar, ¿verdad? Que eviten que yo pueda dormir. Entonces, pero el plan es que voy a dormir o si no, por ejemplo, también ustedes lo pueden utilizar con cosas en las cuales tienen una obligación. Sí, I will teach uh, two more classes to you. Two more classes to you. Sí. Entonces, eso también es una obligación. Es algo que yo debo hacer, ¿verdad? Debo eh, estar en dos clases más con ustedes. So that's um, something I have to say with Will because it's an obligation. It's something that I have to do. Um, so, yeah. Muy bien. Teniendo eso entonces fuera del camino, vamos a pasar a esto solo por un momento porque en realidad ya vamos a tener, de hecho, eh, que terminar la clase, pero para que sepan, ¿verdad?, que el día de mañana vamos a tener un poco de práctica de lectura, ¿sí? Tenemos, estas lecturas son cortas, algo así como esto en realidad será 
lo que estemos leyendo cuando hagamos nuestra última práctica, sí, en nuestra última clase. Así que, eh, para que se hagan la idea, ¿verdad? Más o menos de lo que vamos a tener que hacer. Muy bien. This first topic is driverless cars. And uh, here we go. It, the reading should go as following. You're driving to school. You look up to see a pretty hot air balloon. Whoa, you almost went through a stop sign. In a driverless car, you can look at the balloon. The car sees the stop sign without your help and it stops the car. Car makers and others are already testing driverless cars or AVs, automated vehicles, in the US and other countries. Some companies are working together in driverless technology. Intel USA is working with BMW Germany and Mobileye Israel on a driverless car. Google USA and Nissan Japan are making their own driverless car. In the US, car makers can test AVs in Florida, California, Nevada, and District of Columbia. Driverless cars may be for sale by 2025. Okay, entonces, this is the first one. It's very easy, right? It's not too complicated. It's about driverless cars. Um, I think there is not really many difficult words in it either. Now, we'll see the next one. This one is about music. It's about blues, see, blues. All right, so the reading goes as following. When millions of Africans were transported to America as slaves in the 18th and 19th centuries, their melodies and rhythms went with them. They knew that singing together made working easier. And as it was in these work songs that African rhythms and melodies were preserved until, sla until slavery ended in 1865. Many African Americans became Christians and sang hymns in church. Others learned to play popular songs and dance tunes for money. But whenever they sang and played, the African rhythms of the old work songs could be heard. And when they expressed the feel their feelings by creating a new song, African melodies could be heard in the tongues. Okay, so here we have it. It's another reading. And this one is about the blues. See, it's very simple. It's not complicated at all. Once again, we don't really have like a lot of uh, weird words. Maybe the only one that might need a little bit of a practice will be rhythms. See, esta que se refiere a los, ritm a los ritmos, rhythms. But apart from that, it's very easy. Okay, there is not any complication, I would say, in practicing this reading. Pero igual, como les decía, Something very similar to this is what we're going to be doing for our last practice on, on Thursday. Um, so beware, okay? Right now, before we go, I would like to know if I have any volunteers to give a read to these um, paragraphs, and then we finish the class. ¿Algún voluntario para leer antes que terminemos la clase? Let me just sure. share. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Yosmin. Okay. If you are driving to school, you look you look up to see a pretty hot air balloon. Whoa. You almost went through a stop scene in a driverless driverless car. You can look at the balloon, the car sees the stop scene without your help and stop the car. Car makers and others are really testing, test, testing uh, driverless car on AVs, automated vehicles in the USA and other countries. Some companies are working together on driverless technology. Intel USA is working with BMW Germany and Mobil, 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 Mobil Israel on a driverless car. Google USA and Nissan Japan are making their own driverless car. 
in the USA car maker can test ABs in Florida, California, Nevada, and the District of Columbia. Driverless car made before sell be by uh, 2025. 2025, very good. Muy bien. Ok, entonces eso vamos a practicar también el día de mañana, un poco de eso, también un, otro par de actividades. Um, pero bueno, ya nos estamos acercando al final, ¿verdad? Del curso. Por ahora, pues bueno, I have to say that I have enjoyed my time with you guys. And uh, yeah, for now, or for tonight at least, I just have to thank you very much for your attention and participation in this class. And I hope I'll see you tomorrow once again. And I hope we can have some fun tomorrow as well. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow, guys. Okay, good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.